Uh, this essay is about a conversation I had with Gigi uh, in Buena Vista, Georgia. And if you look at the index page on the right hand side of the articles under Gigi, you'll notice many, many discussions I've had with Gigi. Um, she is, without a doubt, the most educated, the most educated woman that I know um, who is, um, you know, above 65. She is just, she thinks, she reads constantly. She is just a gifted, a very gifted friend of mine. And so whenever Gigi says anything to me, I listen. And um, we got into a, a, a long discussion about, about me and what motivates me especially when it comes to three young kids. Uh, Jack and Owen, Jack is six and Owen is four. And, and actually the other child uh, is now around 11 years old and her name is TT. I've written many articles about playing Scrabble with TT in, um, in Myanmar. And, and, I, and in those articles, I've often said that T.T. is as much a granddaughter of mine as Jack and Owen are my grandsons. I wasn't prepared to say what I was about to say, and I, I figured I might as well say it. I care so much about those three children, one's a preteen, but I would give up my life in a nanosecond to protect e either the two grandsons in Indianapolis or my, my granddaughter in Myanmar. And it's partly, and my, my feelings toward the kids is partly because they've always been loving and caring and da, 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 da. But Gigi kind of forced the issue and, and made me verbalize my, my, my drive about those three young people. And it, and it goes back to my childhood and not wanting to have them go through the same problems that I did. I made a, a mistake about the way I added things up because moving from Pennsylvania, New Jersey to Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania, that had a profound negative effect upon me, going from above average student to an average student. And I, I kid you not, I felt two things. One is very dumb and very poor. And, and it took me a good chunk of my life to understand that I made a mistake. And I did the addition and it came up with the wrong number. And I don't want anybody, especially people that I know, young children that I know, to make that mistake also. Um, you know, I, I it, it is not something, I mean, I was down in India a couple, India, Indiana a couple weeks ago and Jack is off in kindergarten and I'm sitting there talking to Owen one time 
This is just in the last couple of weeks. And I said, I want, you, I want to do something with you. And he says, I can't do it. Meaning he wasn't capable of doing it. And that kind of thing, you know, he didn't mean it to hurt me. He was just simply saying, I'm not able to write my name correctly. I wanted him to write a name because I wanted him to do something with a post-it note. And he said, I can't do that. And I mean, and, and the normal person would have said, okay, you can't do it, and we'll, we'll wait till you can do it and move on. That, that bothered me personally, not what, not what he was, not that he said it. It bothered me that he didn't think he was capable of doing something, which simply turns on all the thoughts in my head of, okay, if you can't do it, I'll teach you how to do it. And I've written about this many times, about being in um, Myanmar and, and visiting um, Momo's uh, daughter, who, who at that time was nine years old, and she was home from school some holiday. And Momo had to pick up something for the tour that I was on, and she said, you know, you can sit and talk to my daughter for a second. T.T. wanted to play games, and I so I said, you know, I'll, play, I'll teach you how to play tic-tac-toe. And she played it five minutes, and it was kind of boring, and she says, let's play Scrabble. And I said, and she said, do you know how to play it? And I said, oh, I'll beat you. And we played Scrabble for a good chunk of an hour. And it was not a scrabble that I was used to. It was a scrabble with a piece of paper and a pencil. And she started to play it, and, she, and I looked at it, and I thought, what is she? And she says, don't you know how to play scrabble? <laughs> and so I said, oh, yeah, I know how to play scrabble. So we played it the way she played it. And at the end of the game, <clears throat> she went through one side of the page, flipped it over and went through the other side of the page. At the end of the game, she said, the game's over. And I said, great. Blah, blah, blah. And I was ready to leave. And she said, no, let me add up the score. And she added up the score. And all of a sudden, her eyes lit up. And she said, I beat you. And I said, young lady, you never forget that. That you beat somebody that was old enough to be your grandfather, who... And you're doing it in, in an American game, in his language, in your country. Don't ever forget that. It goes back to the issue of sexism in the world. T.T. is a child in a military dictatorship so she has a couple strikes against her but I'll do whatever I can do to keep her from having feelings that she's inadequate because she's a, a girl so this is an essay about GD, GG kind of, GG kind of forced me to think about what motivates me. And so like many of my essays, those essays are backstories. This is an interesting story about two kids or three kids two grandsons in Indy and one granddaughter in Mimor. 
most everybody that reads any of my essays won't know any of those kids. But what motivates you when it comes to young children? Or what should motivate you? You can't protect them from everything that's going to happen to them in their lives. But you can help them avoid wasting time thinking that they can't accomplish things. That is the greatest gift that you can give to those children. And there are plenty of children in your neighborhood, in your family, or spread throughout the world that need your help. And your choice is whether you're going to get involved or not. Think about that choice. Thank you for the time.